incredibly passionate about the intersection of art and science. And not just because it's so core to our industry today, but it's because it's what I live and breathe every single day in my job. Now, in preparation for today, I was doing a little bit of research, and I stumbled across a quote, a quote which truly resonated with me. Study the art of science. Where is my present? Study, study the art of science. Study the science of art. Develop your senses. Especially learn to see. Realize that everything connects to everything else. Now, this man has not only inspired me tre tremendously, but he's also had a profound impact on the way we think about advertising today. And no, it's not Martin Sorrell. It is, in fact, click, Leonardo da Vinci, inventor of musical instruments, flying machines, compulsive notebook keeper, vegetarian, struggled to finish any form of projects or paintings that he started, obsessed with learning and obs obs observing all the nature and phenomena from all the phenomena in nature, from the proportions of the human body to the way in which the muscles in our lips moved. He wanted to know about everything in minute detail. And he, he blended those observations with experiments. He preferred to deduce from experiment rather than theoretical principles. So he'd continuously record and analyze all those observations to ultimately find commonalities and differences, but it was all about connecting the dots in between. So when you, you can start to see now the synergies between the da Vinci way of thinking and what we think and do in our industry today. When he became fascinated by building a flying machine, he filled up notebooks with his studies about the form, function, and speed at which of birds and, the, and how their wings flapped. So he used sight, sound, and motion to truly understand and, ex and visualize everything that it was that he was experiencing around him. And then he depicted that in the form of his scientific drawings and his paintings with more accuracy than anyone from his time. So was da Vinci an artist or a scientist? That's a magic question. We don't have to choose. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Da Vinci was brilliant in that he knew how to educate the mass by providing something incredibly beautiful to look at, deeply thought-provoking, and at the same time powered technology forward. So when we think about our industry and advertising and the application of technology to marketing and publishing, we don't have to be so one-dimensional about it. We have to think about how one builds upon the other. Art informs science, science informs art. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit more today about how we as a publisher have managed to bring those worlds together and applied so many of the da Vinci principles to solve the ultimate equation, the loyalty equation. Now, if I were you looking at that, I'd think, what the hell is that? But it doesn't have to be that complicated. I'm going to break it down for you. However, us publishers, we've had to learn that the hard way in an ever-changing digital landscape where the only new normal is the fact is, is that there is no normal. And the pace at which media consumption habits is changing accelerates every single day. Our single biggest challenge is the fight for consumer attention. We get bombarded with so much information every single day from the moment we wake up in the morning right throughout the day until we put our heads in that pillow at night and close our eyes. It's incredibly difficult for a brand to cut through that noise and form a meaningful connection with the consumer. The only way you can do that is with quality and trust rooted in brands people know and love. Now, well, brands people are incredibly loyal to. Now, I've been in the industry for quite some time, and I've observed, and I've experienced, and I've very much been part of this rapid change. And I've seen these two overarching themes emerge. And this gives you a lot more context as to why that loyalty equation is so incredibly important. But the first, consumers are in charge. They want what they want, whenever they want it, on whatever device they want it from, predominantly on the mobile device. They can access content while they're flying 30,000 feet in the air, going 400 miles per hour um, from an airplane on their phone. They can wake up in the morning and go, OK, Google, tell me about my day. They can get home from a crazy day at work, like me, and go, uh, Alexa, please pay my peaceful piano Spotify playlist. But it's an always-on, on-demand society. 
They want to be entertained. They want to be informed. They want to be inspired. They want their privacy protected. They don't want to be creeped out. Incredibly demanding. And then seemingly contradicting to that, marketers are in control. They want big ideas, efficiencies at scale, marketing solutions aligned to how consumers consume media in a modern world, and that's changing every day. They want fewer partners, deeper relationships. They want, to, they want to connect with those consumers at every stage on, the, on, the, on their purchase journey and influence them on their path to purchase. Because they want ROI, they want sales. And they want all of that with brand safety and viewability, leveraging first-party data. Also, incredibly demanding. And then there's us publishers. We aren't necessarily in charge or in control, but we sit somewhere in the middle of all that complexity. However, we in a very unique position to solve for that equation because we have a direct relationship with our consumers and, and publishers bring good stories to people and storytelling will always persevere. So let's go back to that loyalty equation and start with the output. Now, in order for me to do this, I'm going to take you on a little inside journey into the mail line as a brand. And, um, define what loyalty actually means to us. Now, just take into account the fact that we are amazing, incredible storytellers, publishers themselves, we've born and bred storytellers. Technology's enabled us to tell those stories in far more exciting ways than ever before. We can now go and tell stories in eight-second increments in Snapchat, which was never a thing before. We can also understand who our consumers are as people with likes, passions, fears, dislikes. Who are they? What are they up to? What are their interests? How do they operate across platforms? What content resonates with them and why? Now, as a, ooh. now over loyalty to us, in 2008, we unveiled the site to the world, which has become loved by millions. Uh, so we actually celebrate our 10th year anniversary. And I put that in context. Um, this is two years after Facebook opened up to the general public, just a year after Steve Jobs unveiled his iPhone to the world. And in that time, we've become the biggest English-speaking news brand across the globe, reaching 4.7 million people, or 7 million every single day, 4.7 million of those across mobile, desktop, tablets. And the reason I, I really draw attention to daily reach is because we believe that daily repeated scales are a far better indicator of an engaged audience than monthly reach. However, we come out on top on daily, weekly, and monthly. But we've been able to do that because we don't play by the same rules as anyone else. We're constantly doing things differently, finding new ways to innovate and drive people to do stuff, to take some form of action that they genuinely feel good about, whether that's spending seven minutes of their time on our homepage or clicking on a piece of content that isn't necessarily reflective of their standard consumer behavior, so that's not content they'd normally read, but they discovered on the right-hand rail. It's our editorial tone of voice that our audience loves and is completely addicted to. We have a 14-meter homepage, gets updated every, every 15 minutes, and our average homepage visitor comes back 27 times a month. Now, if that's not loyalty, I don't know what is. Now, in, our, our homepage is actually held strong. Now, throughout all this change where we constantly get served up with content from social and search, um, a lot of publishers have become incredibly reliant on social and search for their traffic. And that's not necessarily loyal traffic, not a loyal audience, because people come once or twice a month. And very often, those audiences, they don't even necessarily know who published the content they read in but 60% of our traffic comes direct to site. So that's people actively seeking out the brand day in and day out. Now, that's incredibly powerful. That's what every single publisher aspires to. We've managed to weave our way into people's daily habit, become part of their daily routine. We actually see people interact with the brand more or less the same time every single day. We see traffic spikes at 8 a.m. in the morning on the commute in, and that's always a very proud moment when you get onto the train in the morning and you see two people on either side of you on the app. We see traffic spikes again at lunchtime on desktop. Again, mid-afternoon coffee lull, 3 p.m. Back on their commute home from work. 10 p.m. before they go to sleep at night. And then interestingly, we actually see a huge amount of activity from mothers all throughout the night when they're feeding their babies. Now, that's incredibly powerful. Having that consistent 
people actually seeking out a brand day in, day out. So much so it has become part of their daily habits. I'd say that's loyalty. Now let's talk a little bit more about how we actually get that loyalty, starting with art. We constantly invest in editorial. So many publishers are stripping back at editorial every day and they're just curating content. We create, we don't just curate. We have 600 digital-only journalists that are out of the office, boots on the ground, breaking news stories every single day, 24-7. Only 80, I mean, 88% of that content that you see on our site is content that those journalists have created. Only 12% is based off print editorial, and that's because we have our own unique voice, our own unique identity. We're not the print brand. We publish 1,500 articles every single day, and we have a team of picture editors that scroll through the web to find images that form the basis of every one of our stories. And just like Da Vinci, who believed that sight was the most important sense, so do we. We believe our, editor, our, picture, our editor is a picture editor at heart, and he believes in telling stories in a very visual, interactive way. So you have a lot of big headlines, a huge amount of detail in the content, an image bank, huge amounts of images, and videos, so many videos. We post 560 videos every single day, generating 250 million video views every single month. So we reach more people more frequently with more content than any other English Week news brand across the globe. And our audience doesn't just like, read the content, they like, share, vote, comment on it. And it's because of that expertise at, at creating content that truly resonates with them. We know what works, we know what doesn't work. Paired together with that influence, we can start these, conversa these conversations that lead to chain reactions and they start big trends. And we know it's training because it's what you're viewing. We sit at the heart of all those cultural moments. There isn't a single trend that we aren't at the forefront of in, this, in, the, in the past 10 years. Love Island, in, this, in the past six weeks, we've written 1,498 articles, generating 186 million article views. And there are, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of hours of time spent in that. Now, that's incredibly powerful. It doesn't matter whether it's Love Island, whether it's the Royal Wedding, whether it's World Cup. Our audience absolutely love it's what they want, and they come back day in and day out. They know that we are going to be at the forefront of those stories, breaking news stories with, with um, a huge bank of images, lots of videos, very visual, and they'll come out feeling incredibly entertained. Now, that's very incredibly important in this day and age, specifically because we get so much information. Brands, they've had to adapt their narrative and become part of those conversations rather than part of that noise. Now, that's art. It's only one part of the equation, but our editors are artists. Creativity has to weave through every single thing you do. Intuition, knowing what stories to break, when and where, is incredibly important. Tone of voice, authenticity, the ability to inspire and tap into people's emotion. Visual, imagery, video, it's key for us. Now, um, I heard someone actually refer to an editor as a walking algorithm a while back. And that's not only because they've got years and years and years of journalistic experience, but there's magic in creativity. Using your instinct and your intuition to know exactly what story might work and might, might not work with an audience is, is incredibly key. Now, if you take that one step further, I think it's a beautiful way to describe how publishers and the modern-day editor have had to evolve from being these imaginative storytellers into these multi-dimensional, multi-faceted beings that understand how to use data and tech. They've had to become data analysts, data scientists, so that they can tell those stories in far more exciting, meaningful ways. Now, that's where the science comes into play. Now, so many publishers and are incredibly obsessed with Google Analytics and what's popping on Facebook at any given moment in any given time. And we have an incredible search and social team that do exactly that. But our editors are obsessed with something completely different. Just like Da Vinci, who was an engineer, an architect, he was a designer, so are we. We build our own technology, whether it's our own content management, I mean, consent management platform for GDPR, or whether it's our own real-time analytics tool called RTA2. I call it R2D2 because it sounds just, it's just as cool as the other. 
But this tool gives our editors the ability to analyze all the content that we've published in all around the globe, every single moment of every single day, to see what's popping, what's trending, what's really working with our audience. And they can use that insight. We can tell at any given time if someone's clicked on a piece of content from any given geo, and we can use that insight to balance the content that they want to read with what we think they should be reading. And because we've got that real-time reader feedback loop, we can tell, we can hone in and optimize those titles. And we can say, OK, we can make, change all the imagery, tweak the titles to make the page incredibly engaging and sticky. Now, while the tech enables us to do that, it's an actual human being that's editing the page. Now, when we take, and, and, they, and that's kind of where you can start seeing these worlds come together, which gets incredibly exciting. Now, if we were to dive in a little bit deeper and analyze how audiences engage with each individual piece of content um, even further, uh, we use heat maps. And this gives a lot of insight into do they scroll up and down the right hand rail? Do they click from the right hand rail and go directly to the title, to the image, I mean, to the headline of the content? How many, how many paragraphs do they read? How many images do they go through? Do they go directly to the image? Where do they drop off? Now, some of our pieces of content have anything from 8 to 50 images. And this gives our editors the ability to constantly hone and constantly optimize and make, those, make our, audio, our, our site incredibly engaging. Now, sorry. Um, the technology, science, tech, the data, it gives us incredible insight to make us far more relevant for our audience, more so than ever before. But now you can start to see if one without the other, only, only a fra it, it means that it's, like, it's a fragment of itself. It's when you bring those two together that you actually start to see the magic happen. However, just like da Vinci, who was the most multi-diversely talented individual of our time, he was incredible. He was an artist, a scientist, an engineer, a, a painter, a botanist, a mathematician, a historian. He was all those things. He was also a universal genius. You need a little bit something more to actually bring all of that together. You need a sprinkle of genius to bring that together and develop the type of loyalty that we need in this day and age. Thank you.